what is going on guys welcome back to the channel sorry it's been a minute since the last video there has been delay upon delay first of all we had to wait three weeks for the new engine new engine turned up turned out I needed a few more bits ordered those more waiting ended up getting involved with another project away from the workshop a bit of fishing and stuff putting up sheds all sorts that's all done T5 is in the workshop we're keen to get on with it if you know the T5 already it boils over it pressurizes the radiators burst it's leaking coolant we're going to get the engine out see what's going on we we'll take the head off take the water pump out a few of you mentioned in the last video about the water pumps fail I've seen a few posts on the head gaskets fail anyway it's now time to get straight on with it I've got the engine it's in pieces we'll have a look at that in a minute let's just get straight into it oh yeah first of all let's have a look at the engine I had a spare ASZ engine but that's out the mark 4 golf and that's got the wrong oil filter if you look at how far this oil filter pokes out when you fit these into t5s and caddies this pokes out way too much you need to get the ASZ engine out of a Skoda Fabia or a say a Alhambra something like that and the oil filter housing sits right in here so that's a mark 4 ASZ and that is not right for what we wanted to do we got an ASZ engine out of a Skoda Fabia good engine 115,000 miles and it is a genuine 115,000 miles I'll show you in a minute we'll lift the cloth up the reason I know that is because I've done a bit of research I see it on eBay the guy listed it as 115,000 miles only ever driven to church by an old lady on Sundays all that Macintosh most of the engines on eBay say it so done a bit of research looked through his other pictures and I could see this was the engine that was in the picture we had oil stains in the same places we had a couple of marks on it and I could see that in the pictures and when the engine turned up then in one of the pictures I could see the registration so sneaky went onto the Vosa website and you can check the MOT off the reg done that come up with the exact same mileage then I look through uh, advisories no advisories for oil leaks or anything like that so that is a genuine 115,000 mile engine happy days reason why it's stripped straight down because you might have seen a poster put up about three weeks ago a month engine complete on a pallet looking relatively ready to go straight in while the engine's out I wanted to do all the good bits you know thermostat housing time belt water pump and then obviously diesel glow plugs even if you ain't going to change the glow plugs while the engine's out you want to make sure they come out went to undo the glow plugs and two of them snapped straight in the head you can see that one there I did try butchering it to get it out two glow plugs snapped in the head so lucky I checked them because the last thing I'd want to do is fit the engine then maybe have an issue with glow plugs or if I sell it then end up the new owner having issues with snapped glow plugs we don't want that so back to the mark 4 golf engine I thought oh, let's just see if these glow plugs come out lo and behold all four glow plugs brand new I might add literally they were straight in there and uh, yeah all four glow plugs come out nice and easy um, straight out so it turns out we're going to use the head off that one on this engine and also when you take the head off an engine you can then confirm how many miles it's done or how well it's been sort of looked after you know driven to church every just on a Sunday or groceries on a Monday morning pulled the head off and literally straight away I have give it a bit of a clean under there and I've obviously cleaned the pistons but we can see that the bores there's absolutely no lip on the bores whatsoever I can't get my nail under a lip so really good engine wear on this and can we see there is cross hatching you can still see the cross hatching it's not a shiny block because if you take your head off and you see your barrel uh, barrel or sleeve whatever you want to call it and it's shiny that means it's worn we've still got cross hatch marks we've got zero lip on the bores yeah really good engine it's stripped down I did spend like three weeks more like three hours 
cleaning the block off because it was a bit rusty there was paint flaking off cleaned all that off and then we've got some black on it just to tidy it up because we want it to look relatively pretty i have done the block mod on it already we've also got the head strip down camshaft from one of the engines was new we've got new buckets as well to go with it because that's a common issue we've just got a mess of pd parts it's like a pd engine center here that is the oil filter housing we're going to use all new gaskets all new seals all new head bolts head gasket the lot time belt water pump the t5 has already got a new clutch in it so we're going to reuse that no more chit chat let's get the front end off this the reason i'm going to get the front end off is because normally if i'm working on something like this with one of these engines i would undo engine mount bolts both sides lift the vehicle up and lower the engine out the bottom but i can't lift this van up that high so we're going to old methods we're not going to try lifting the engine out of here because it's way too small we're going to get the front end off see what's behind there because we're going to put the later front end on anyway get the front end off pull the engine forward strip it down see what's going on see while it's boiling over we have got a burst radiator so i do need to replace it anyway let's get this front end off let's get this engine out and let's see what's going on it is well overdue roll a time lapse took about an hour and a half it wasn't too bad I've never taken a t5 apart before but it's the same as most VW stuff you've got the same size bolts torques 10 mils 13 mils that hold the uh, the cross member on slam panel there was a random 11 mil bolt either end if you've got a t5 transporter and you've ever taken the front bumper and the crash bar off did yours have a random 11 mil bolt either side this has never been apart, so it must be. But if you've taken one of these apart and you found the same bolts, drop a comment down below and let me know. Let's have a little look at the collection of bits. It is raining now, but uh, it's not cold. Let's have a butchers at the stuff. We have a collection of bits. Front panel, radiator, uh, lower crash bar, intercooler, headlights, front bumper, rad fans. If anyone's got a T5 and needs a good condition front bumper or some headlights, you can have these for completely free. Drop a comment down below because I'm going to upgrade mine to the T5.1. So if you need uh, these bits or any of these bits, let me know. You can have them for completely free. Um, it's actually raining inside the workshop. We've got a little hole, but uh, it's not too bad. Anyway, intercooler. It is slightly burst out. You can see the end has sort of popped open. That's where all the oil's coming from. Need a replacement on that. We have got air con. Air con radiator's all right. I will pressure test it when it goes back together. I'll show you how we do that. Um, but yeah, all bits are in good condition, apart from obviously the broke ones. It's never been apart before. Yeah, it's not been tampered with. Happy days. Now gonna focus on getting the engine out. Water hoses off wiring loom out of the way uh bring the engine forward subframes in the way so we can't lower it like in a car get some bits unhooked get the engine crane it might happen today it might not but let's uh let's get on with taking some hoses and some clips out another time lapse i won't bore you with uh hours and hours of footage undoing stuff but uh let's roll another time lapse and let's get as much off as possible i do need to unbolt the drive shafts from the gearbox but uh I might be able to slide under, I might be able to do it from the top, otherwise I need to get the wheels off and I've loaned my jack to someone, uh, it's not here. Anyway, let's roll another time lapse and let's get into getting the engine out.
had to wait half hour for my mate to get back so I could borrow his extremely large engine hoist. While he was out, while I was waiting for him, I got the alternator and the front bracket, power steering pump, air conditioning pump off just to lighten the load. I've got as many engine mount bolts undone as possible. Front one is just rattling about, but I didn't want to take it out just in case it fell out. Um, I'm doing this bad boy. Engine is definitely out. Still need to get a buzz gun. I borrowed this Milwaukee one pinch. Works good. Right. Do I get that out of the way? Let's go for it. Let's just go for it. Okay. I need to go up. If you're doing it on your own, an engine swap, just keep checking that nothing's snagged up. You'll end up snapping a cable, and in the end, it just costs you more money. And no one likes to waste money. Right. It's nothing. It says, oh, gear cable just hooked. Got him. Got him before danger struck. And we are out. As soon as I get it out, I lower it back down just in case anything snapped. The seatbelt strap snapped. It's not going to fall that far and damage anything. So I don't. Well, saying that, I want the sump for the new engine and the gearbox. The gearbox is ain't cheap. That'll do for now. We're out. DTE horsepower. I'll tell you what, this has been really good to work on. Everything's been easy to get to. Nothing's been super stiff. Yeah. Very nice. And as you, if you've seen the caddy build, you know I like to call it clean stuff. I'm going to clean this engine bay till it's brand new. Every piece, every hose, every bracket, I want it to be really clean. So when it goes back in, it's aesthetically pleasing as well as good. Anyway, I'm going for dinner. So we'll either resume this later, which is a second for you, or it'll be tomorrow. Either way, I need to get the gearbox off, strip everything off this engine, we'll pull the head off, and see what's wrong with it, why the water was pressurising. And I'll tell you one thing I did notice, I thought, you learn something new every day, so I mentioned the block mod that I've done to the new engine. Well that is for the caddies and I believed it was for the transporters. 
this has got the old style crank sensor. So the PD 130s, PD 150s fit straight in. No block mod needed. I say that, I haven't fitted that engine in yet, we'll find out. This uh I'm gonna get this stripped down and we'll find out if your gasket's gone. Oh my god, I edited yesterday's footage, you know, with the rain, and that was loud. Audio is pony in that last shot, well, in most of the shots. I do apologise, I've just ordered the media mod to go on the GoPro, then I can have my posh little uh, Rode microphones. So then you'd hear me rather than background noise. Um, anyway, that side, I did pull the gearbox off last night. Um, Apart from everything being covered in oil and 280,000 miles worth of road debris, I was happy to see, because I bought the van and the seller said uh, it had a new clutch and flywheel. Nice people, it's not that I didn't believe them, but you never know. Happy days, pulled the box off, we've got a brand new dual mass flywheel, brand new LUK clutch, that's going on the new engine. Yeah, uh, need to get the sump off this, I haven't even lowered it down, I don't want to put this on the floor, you can crack these sumps easy, I don't load your scuffs over it. So before this hits the deck, I'm going to whip the sump off the new engine, put it on this one, because then I can roll it about on the floor, get the head off, and I'm going to put that sump over there, clean it out. Uh, need to get changed, Let's get some black clothes on, black trainers on. So my trainers yesterday got absolutely soaked in the rain. Day two, let's get on with it. Uh, I'll quickly do this off camera, I'll swap sumps and we'll lower it on the floor, get the head off, see what's going on with this. Need to upgrade the turbo, it's like a snail, it's tiny. I don't want massive power from the van, but I want it to go a little bit better. But if you remap them and get them going too fast, the five speed gearboxes don't handle it too well. So I'm going to upgrade it a little bit, but not too much that it reduces longevity of the gearbox. Anyway, enough chit chat. Let's get straight onto it. We're about there. I have got the turbo off, the inlet manifold off. I've dotted all the T5 bits in this corner. Everything over there is off the Fabio. Everything over here is off the T5. I do plan to use whatever I can off the Fabio engine because it's done less than half the miles. Aircon, pump, uh, alternator, and a few other bits. If I can use the lower mileage bits, I will. Otherwise, T5 stuff's over here. It's relatively organized, but I do need to straighten it up a little bit. Anyway, this is all stripped down. Rocket covers off, and I tell you what, 280,000 miles, this looks really, really clean. We'll see what it's like when I get the head off, you know, the barrels and stuff. It's almost a shame to be putting another engine in. Because with a new head gasket or whatever's gone wrong, this would probably see the same mileage again. Anyway, first thing, easy, water pump, let's have a butcher's. A few of you guys at home commented and said the water pumps fail. Now the only way they can really fail is if the impeller on the inside comes off and then you've got no cooling, then you do the head gasket. But let's see, it's only three bolts holding the water pump. Timing belt and water pump didn't look too old, but uh, we're not gonna reuse it, of course. We want it to be good. Well, the water pump, there's nothing wrong with that. There's actually no play in it. Tiny bit of play in it. Nothing wrong with the water pump. The only other thing it can be is head gasket. We're going old school. I haven't got a buzz gun yet. I borrowed one yesterday. We're old school airline. I've already cracked all these bolts off. Yeah. I don't. No, it isn't. 
I need to take that off. And what I do when I take a part off, like the turbo or the alternator, I will leave the bolts that go with it, with it. That way you haven't just got the biggest pile of bolts and you've got to pick through them and work out what went to what. So I'll take this cover off. And have I got to take the stud out? Nope. I will put that bolt in there. I will use that. Now there is the part I've just taken off with the bolts, nice and easy. And I will be cleaning everything. I've got to shoot out in about an hour, but when I come back tonight, I'm gonna to push the T5 outside, clean that, clean everything that come off this engine so it's mint and want it tidy. We're ready for the head, but we don't want to get fouled up, so. Cam sensor is out. Nothing else. I don't plan to reuse this head, but I don't. Let's get a copper mallet. I might reuse it. I doubt it. I still don't want to damage it. It's lifting. Just double check there's no other bolts. Nope. There it goes. Look at the cylinders. There's only a small lip. Blimey. The boards are a lot shinier. Well, they're very shiny actually. But there's no lip on the engine. That is really good. 280 odd thousand miles. There's still no lip on the boards. But the boards are shiny. I'll show you in a minute. But we are looking for head gasket failure. Can't see it on the block. Let me reposition the camera. Oh yeah. <sighs> so hopefully we can see it on the gasket. Pouring oil out. Get the manifold gasket out of the way. Don't want to make a mess. Well, it is a bit corroded there. Can I get the gasket off? It had to have been this. Because it literally pressurised. If you saw the first video when we picked it up, it was pressurising almost straight away. Trying to get it off without absolutely hammering it. It is very stuck. And what you look for, the cylinders, they blow out into the waterways. Um, so this is a MLS multi-layer head gasket. It is multiple layers of steel. When you get the older type head gaskets, on petrols normally, it's cardboard then with a ring on the inside. And literally you'll see it blown straight out of a cylinder into a water jacket. But because this is a multi-layer head gasket, it's not as easy to see, but I can see. Let's see if you can see. Let me touch the camera because the screen's gone off. Can we see? Yeah. It is rusty around all the water jackets. Like, I think it went there actually. There we go. Can I pull that apart? Mm. So let me double check. You can see those three holes are meant to be three circle holes. Well that, one is bigger than the other. Like rusted and corroded away. That was definitely it. We're not gonna reuse it, but we wanted to know what went on. Another head gasket on this, 
and that engine would have been good to go again. Can we see they're shiny? I've got a torch, I don't know if you'll see them. GoPro doesn't pick up too much, but they're shiny and they're smooth. There's a really small lip on there, but nothing that would concern me. If I had to, and I didn't know the mileage of this engine, I would reuse it because it is still good. Um, it's a bit of a shame because a new head gasket on that, and that would have been fine. Check out 280,000 miles worth of blow-by and slight oil weepage. If you remember rightly, we had a boost pipe that was leaking on that side because of the intercooler broke. Well, that, over the time, I don't know how long it's been blowing for, has caused all of that. Now, if I show you the head that we're using, check out how clean that is. Part numbers are the same as well from the T5 to this engine, so it's the exact same head. I did also clean all the inside. What I didn't mention is, I've got a whole new rebuild kit for it. I wanted to lap all the valves in. Let's get one. Can you see that? Can you see the shiny ring around the bottom of the valve? Well, they've all been lapped in to corresponding cylinders, and I wanted to do new valve stem seals. Uh, yeah, there's all new valve stem seals. They were 40 quid on eBay. Euro car parts, 50p each. Thank you very much. Sometimes Euros can be a bit, but they come uh, through good this time. We've also got new injector seals, new injector push rods, everything. I want this to be brand new. Now, I'm gonna have a good tidy up, sort all the tools out, put all the tools away. What are you putting the tools away for? Because they're just a mess and it looks absolutely awful in here. So I'm gonna tidy up, pop out for some lunch, we want to get the T5 outside and clean this engine bay. There's no way I'm putting another engine in there without cleaning it. You can't clean it as well when the engine's in there, so we'll clean it while it's out. I need to clean everything. Look, the same oil is all over the gearbox. It's not an oil leak, it's just dirt that's built up. And then again, over all the pipes, one pipe actually, where is he? I don't know. Well, there was one of the pipes that sat about here that's blown up and swollen out because it had oil on it. So I'm gonna get another hose. Hopefully I've got one with one of those engines. But anyway, yeah, we get it outside. I'll clean all the uh, all the stuff off and uh, yeah, we'll reevaluate then. But yeah, engine is not too bad. Do need this thermostat housing. Got a new thermostat to go in it. We've got new glow plugs. Um, yeah, I cannot wait to start putting this back together. I had a bit of a spruce up put all the tool, tools away, moved a few bits, shimmied a few bits around. We got the van out and I've got a collection of parts ready for, oh, collection of parts ready to be pressure washed. Drive shaft, boost hoses, radiator fans, anything that was covered in oil and is not very nice, I am going to give it a blast in. And any small pieces, I put them in a, a basket and then blast them. So then you're not blasting them all around the car park. Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, we got this outside. I want it to look tidy in there. You can see it was absolutely hanging absolutely everywhere. Um, I take it that's a wax oil stuff. Is that from factory? What I'm going to do, because I am going to clean it, literally, I'm going to clean it like you've never seen before. And I will put a bit of wax oil, a bit of grease in a few areas, you know, around seam joints and stuff. Um, not that I think they rust out, but I don't want to wash all this off and then it rust out. So I'll put a load of wax oil in stuff after it's cleaned. But it is absolutely hanging. I'm going to roll a montage of shots, a bit of a time lapse. Last one of this video. Let's get this cleaned.
the following day, everything is dried out. I went round all the connectors, gave them a good blowout with an air blower because we needed to clean the wiring loom because that was hanging with grease too. Made sure I gave it all a good cleaning, but I didn't go too mad. I left some of that gooey stuff on and that's, um, that's a wax oil from factory, I believe. I didn't want to wash all of it out and then it rust out. And that's why I left some, you know, in the chassis rails, both sides, and that just stops it from rusting after cleaning it right out. Looks a lot better than it did. All the subframe is still nice and clean. Check all that out. Steering rack, nice and clean. Anti-roll bar. Yeah, really happy with that. Gave everywhere a good clean. Now it's ready. When we put the new engine in, it's aesthetically going to look pleasing. Also, aside from that, I did get all the other bits that I cleaned and gave them a Facebook Marketplace rebuild. And by that, I mean, they've come up nice. Not trying to hide anything, not trying to cover anything up. But if you've seen on the channel before, if I play with something, I want it to look tidy and clean. You know, um, powder coated silver, powder coated black. And uh, yeah, I just want it to look nice when it goes back together. The sump, I did spend a little while on the sump. Don't want to scratch it. Also cleaned all inside. Um, might as well while it's off. That's the T5 sump. We're going to use that on the PD-130. Yeah, they've come out really nice. We're just waiting on some more powder coat silver to turn up to do the inlet manifold. And uh, that'll be the last of it. There might be a few other small pieces, but yeah, that'll do for now. Didn't paint over none of the bolts. I've left them in their corresponding holes, but I pulled them out, gave them a quick wire wheel on the grinder, and uh, yeah, put them back in their holes ready to go back on i am really happy with those probably spent about three hours on them this morning all makes to a nice job and a nice finish over here we've got a collection of bolts i do still need to give these a wire wheeling um but they're all in their piles we've got starter motor bolts bell housing bolts front bumper bolts turbo bolts inlet manifold front panel uh sump inlet manifold front panel i believe might have got that mixed up and anyway while it's in the shot turbo that's the original turbo off of the t5 now that is pretty small i can't leave that it's done nearly 280 it's done nearly 300,000 miles and if it's not gone which it isn't it's not going to be far so I'd either need to replace that because I can't go to all this effort rebuilding, marketplace rebuilding and cleaning. Can't go to all this effort without replacing the turbo. So there's no point me replacing that one. None of the engines, unfortunately, I bought come with a turbo. So I'm going to have to find a PD-130 turbo. All these bits of 1.9 PD we've got sat here and I'm still missing two pieces. Need a turbo and I need a couple of other bits. I have ordered a timing belt and water pump this morning, a thermostat and a crank seal. Um, there's no way you can't go, you can't do a rebuild and not replace the crankshaft oil spill seal, especially when it's behind the gearbox. They're coming tomorrow need to drop the cylinder head off to have a fresh skim this head gasket hadn't gone and i will mention that when i drop it off to be skimmed that it might not need a lot but while it's off might as well get it uh, skimmed because we have got all new pieces to put it back together anyway we are literally halfway through the engine rebuild i've really enjoyed it we've got a few more bits to do ah oh, just quickly Remember the oil that was all over the engine? Check that out. Well, that is thick. That was also over the cylinder head and it was on the gearbox. Pressure washer the living snot out of the gearbox. I did also grease all these bits back up because they need to be greased and moving. But check that out, nice and clean. Um, I did remove the thrust bearing before pressure washing it. We don't want to wash all the grease out of that. That is going to about do it for this episode. I need to order a couple of bits. I need to drop the cylinder head off. We've got some bits arriving tomorrow. Next video, we'll be putting the engine together, put it in, see how it runs, 
Oh, I have got a rad pack coming, uh, intercooler, radiator pack. Found it off a low mileage T6. I've done some part number Google search webbing into whatever last night, and they fit. So I've got a rad pack from a low mileage T6. A whole lot. Uh, intercooler, radiator, and power steering and aircon. The whole shebang. That's coming today or tomorrow. Happy days. And then, uh, yeah, we can put it all back together. I have got the Caddy front bumper. Some of you might remember, if you're a fan of the Caddy, you'll know that I've got a oh, hybrid front bumper. I really want to get that on. So it'll either be a video on that next, just a front bumper, not the biggest video, or it'll be an update on this. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.